Hi, and welcome to the Colorado State Innovation Model eConsult RFP informational webinar. My name is Laurel Broughton, and I am the Data Strategy Coordinator for SIM. This webinar is intended to provide more information about the RFP and the background behind it. So here's a webinar outline. First, we'll overview SIM and the evolution of the telehealth strategy. Then we'll go over the eConsult Planning and Implementation Project, RFP, first with an overview, then key terminology, goals, the timeline, who can apply, what the deliverables are, and the application evaluation, and how to apply. So what is SIM, and where does the eConsult RFP fit in? SIM is funded by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services to encourage transformation of healthcare payment and delivery systems. Colorado is the only SIM state to focus on the integration of behavioral and physical health in primary care settings with the support of public and private payers. This governor's office initiative will help 25% of the state's primary care practices and four community mental health centers integrate physical and behavioral health. Overall goal is to improve the health of Coloradans by increasing access to integrated physical and behavioral health care services in coordinated systems with value-based payment structures for 80% of Colorado residents by 2019. This slide is meant to visualize the SIM approach so we have the goal on top of increasing access to integrated care and coordinated systems supported by value-based payment. And then below that, we have our four pillars. We have payment reform, practice transformation, population health, and health information technology, or HIT. And then below that, on the base, is consumer engagement, policy, workforce, and evaluation. Those help to support all four pillars. And the telehealth strategy and the eConsult RFP both fall under the HIT pillar. Other things that fall under that pillar are broadband expansion, developing processes and systems to generate actionable reports that can guide future efforts, and creating systems for collecting and aggregating clinical behavioral health and claims data. The telehealth strategy for SIM has undergone quite an evolution over the past three years. We've done a lot of information gathering through all of these efforts, and we've landed on focusing on funding e-consult expansion through health systems, along with policy work to promote the reimbursement of e-consults and telehealth. Expanding e-consults at the health system level with an emphasis on expanding beyond current networks to include rural practices will advance SIMS goals by improving care coordination and help prepare systems for value-based payment models. E-consults are a cost-effective complement to support primary care and specialty care providers as they provide the right care in the right setting at the right time. And it's an essential component of value-based payment models that incent the delivery of valuable care over the volume of care and focus on the quality and experience of care for the patient. So that's how it fits into the overall SIM strategy. Now let's talk about the eConsult Planning and Implementation Project RFP. So this funding opportunity will fund three systems to build additional capacity within the primary care and specialty care provider community and increase access to specialty care across Colorado. So through this RFP, we're funding healthcare entities to plan for or expand the use of electronic consultations to build additional capacity within the primary care and specialty care provider community and increase access to specialty care across Colorado. The comprehensive e-consult program includes the capacity to work with primary care providers and specialty care providers to ensure patients that require an in-person referral and follow-up have their visit coordinated. Healthcare entities interested in this opportunity will demonstrate their ability to provide appropriate in-person referral if needed, especially for Medicare and Medicaid patients and those in rural, frontier, and underserved areas. 
we plan to award three contracts of up to $250,000 to qualified Colorado healthcare entities to evaluate workflow, engage providers, invest in supporting technology, and create an implementation plan to advance the use of e-consultations in Colorado. Awarded contractors may use a portion of contract funds to purchase e-consult technology or support the integration of e-consults into the clinical workflow. Technology investments shall not exceed 100,000 of the total awarded contract. Here's some key terms that are important to keep in mind throughout this RFP. First, there's telehealth, which are healthcare services exchanged between patients and providers through telecommunication systems, including real-time interactions between patients and providers. An e-consult is a component of telehealth that facilitates interactions between a patient's providers. E-consults are remote consultations between providers through a secure platform, usually between a primary care provider and a specialist, to exchange health information and discuss patient care. And it's important to point out that e-consults can be asynchronous. Healthcare entity for the purposes of this RFP is an established specialty care and treatment network with capacity to partner with primary care practices in rural frontier and underserved areas to provide e-consultation and follow-up services and in-person follow-up care as necessary. The goal is for this entity to increase access to specialty care and treatment using technology and prioritizing Medicare and Medicaid patients. And since we're focusing on rural frontier and underserved populations, we have those terms in our RFP as well. And we've aligned those with federal agencies. The goals of the RFP, we have seven of them. The first is to expand access to specialists for frontier, rural, and underserved communities, especially Medicare and Medicaid populations. We see these populations as having the most to benefit from e-consults since they generally have the least access to specialists as it is. The second goal is to improve capacity to manage populations and conditions within the primary care setting by partnering with regional accountable entities, SIM practices, and healthcare systems. The third is to improve coordination between e-consult programs to promote technical compatibility between systems. The fourth is to enhance patient experience through improved coordination of care. The fifth is to develop meaningful measurements and reporting of program outcomes. The sixth is to increase cost-effective outcomes by reducing unnecessary specialty services. And the seventh is to improve population health outcomes through improved access and timeliness of healthcare services. So the most successful applications will address all these goals and align with them. We've aligned this RFP and the implementation plan with the eConsult toolkit that was published by the Center for Connected Health Policy and Blue Path Health, who convened an eConsult work group of payers, providers, state policy leaders, and patient advocates seeking to further the implementation of eConsult. This group published an implementation model on their website that we've adapted here in hopes of coordinating the eConsult program. And you can see here there are elements for successful implementation, and we've linked those to specific sections of the implementation plan. Since this funding is coming from a federal source, there are funding restrictions. The funding cannot be used to match any other federal funds, can't be used to provide services, equipment, or support that are the legal responsibility of another party under federal or state law or under any civil rights laws. Such legal responsibilities include, but are not limited to, modifications of a workplace or other reasonable accommodations that are a specific obligation of the employer or other party. And this is an important Important distinction, services for this scope includes physician time to render services to a patient, review records, reimbursable payments to providers, payments and reimbursements, and clinical services. This funding can't be used to, to supplant existing federal, state, or local 
or private funding of infrastructure or services. It can't be used by local entities to satisfy state matching requirements. It can't be used to pay for the use of specific components, devices, equipment, or personnel that are not integrated into the entire service delivery and payment model proposal. It can't be used to lobby or advocate for changes of federal or state law. And it can't be used to pay for capital expenditures for improvements to land, buildings, or equipment which materially increase their value or useful life as a direct cost, except with the prior written approval of the federal awarding agency. And here's our draft timeline. So the RFP was released October 18th. Proposals are due November 19th by 3 p.m. And we're expecting to have contracts executed early February. And then we'll have our kickoff meeting along with section one due in February. And then section two will also be due in February. We'll have section three due in April. And the convening of awardees where awardees will go over the best practices and lessons learned of their e-consult program. And then the final implementation will be due June 2019. So who can apply? We have mandatory qualifications and preferred qualifications. So for mandatory, the offeror shall be a healthcare entity with an established specialty care and treatment network with capacity to partner with primary care practices in rural, frontier, and underserved areas to provide e-consultation and follow-up services and in-person follow-up care as necessary. You must plan to improve access to specialty care in rural, frontier, and underserved areas, including partnering with primary care providers outside of their usual network of physicians who meet the definition of rural, frontier, and underserved for the purposes of connecting these providers to an e-consult platform with follow-up as needed. You must demonstrate engagement with the appropriate ray. You must have a network of specialty care providers for the intended e-consult services that are located physically within Colorado and have capacity to follow up as needed for in-person referrals. A backup source of specialty providers may be from a regional or national location if needed. For the preferred qualifications, offerors should currently serve Medicaid and Medicare clients and should continue to serve Medicaid clients for the term of the contract. Medicaid and Medicare clients should make up at least 25% of the offeror's patient population. And then you must demonstrate support from executive leadership and stakeholders. So to show this, we're asking for four letters of support, two letters from your organization's executive leadership team, one from the appropriate Ray, and one from a community partner. So what are the deliverables? First, we have a kickoff meeting where we'll be going over section one of the implementation plan. We'll have an awardee convening, which I mentioned earlier, will be for the awardees to come together and share best practices and lessons learned from their e-consult program. There will also be a monthly metrics report, which will include how many e-consults were performed, how many of those e-consults turned into in-person visits, how many specialties are included in your e-consult program, other metrics like those. Then we have the implementation plan, which is really the meat of the project. And this is based on the implementation logic model from the e-consult toolkit that I showed earlier. So section one, we have program vision in alignment with organizational needs. Section two covers governance and staffing model. Section three covers workflow design, supporting IT, and sustainability, and section four covers program management. Due to the short dur duration of the contract period, the implementation plan deliverable has been divided into sections to allow for an iterative approach to developing the final implementation plan. So how will the applications be evaluated? The criteria will be mandatory qualifications, preferred qualifications, organizational experience, sufficient personnel. So those four, we're looking to make sure that your organization meets the mandatory qualifications and the preferred 
and how well positioned your organization is to be able to plan and implement the program successfully. Then we have the initial e-consult plan and approach. So for that, we're looking at how well thought out and aligned is your plan with the goals of SIM and the RFP. Then we have a budget worksheet. So for that, we're looking at are you at or below $250,000? And are your technology investments at or below $100,000? But I'd like to stress here that we're not looking for the most cost-effective solution and that we are prepared to give three full awards of $250,000. So coming in under that amount will not give you an advantage. For the proposal quality, we're looking at how well the applicant answers the question, and we're stressing quality over quantity. So we'd rather shorter answers that are quality than long, drawn out ones. And how to apply. You can find the full RFP on the link listed on our website, and here are the instructions on how to get there. For more information about how to apply, you can look in Appendix A, which is the administrative information, and that'll tell you exactly how to submit and what to submit. And to make it easier to keep track of the responses that we need, we've made a proposal response form. So fill that out and then follow all the instructions in Appendix A and submit it to us. And applications are due by November 19th at 3 p.m. We're looking forward to seeing your applications and thanks for listening.